Our last item is uh, informational update from Mr. Olson. Mr. Olson, I'm going to I'm going to task you to be diligent in your. I, I am going to be speedy. Quick. We'll, we'll, we'll stop for Backwards. questions if we got any, but <laughs> go ahead and shoot on through it. Okay. Then again, this is uh, in response to the council workshop. This is my first um, attempt at this, but I'm. The, the purpose is to give all of you more information on just some projects that you've previously approved that you probably frequently get questions from your constituents about and also hopefully to give you a heads up of things that may be coming down the road that may um, come across your agenda later on. That said, the let's just go. Okay, the first one, and just to give you an idea of the format, I, I'm using green. I, I, I intend to go in the future. Th this is our baseline presentation. In the future, I'll just use the stoplight system. It'll be green if we see it as being okay, yellow if we're seeing some problems. So let's say on funding, if it's moving into the contingency, now we're in the yellow, and if we're over budget, it, you'll see a red, just to give you a quick heads up. Um, so that's the format. Um, the very first one, few projects that have been funded through um, oil spill restoration money. The Marine Fisheries Enhancement Center that one, as you all know, um, $18.8 million project. It was approved back in October of 2014. Um, we estimate that the completion will be sometime in the summer of 2018. Again, this is a complicated project. It's tied in with a several other projects. So uh, what may seem to a lot of people is that's a long time to get something accomplished. Um, this is the first go-round that anybody's had with these types of projects. Uh, the most recent activity that we've had is they've completed the topographic and boundaries surveys. So that gives them the, the green light now to say you can move ahead and remove the excess soil. We should see that beginning in um, this month. And then uh, August, maybe September, we'll see the uh, issuance of a architectural and design services bid. Living Shoreline, this is one that hasn't been talked about a lot, um, but this is the other big project, $11.7 million. Um, what, again, we're kind of on the same timeline as, as the uh, hatchery project. What's happened now is, so this project, it, it's, it's like a, a bigger um, project green shores. So they have to go back in, they have to do a lot of field investigation work, make sure that the bottom would support the type of project that they want to do. So that's where it stands right now. There's been a cultural resources report and the physical surveys of the seabed that have been accomplished. Now that can go to the, uh, to the engineering firm, HDR, and they can look at it and come up with some possible designs. Um, I know there's a lot of public interest in this project, especially for the, the residents who are closest to it. Um, we could see public input, calls for public input probably in October. Uh, the Government Street Stormwater Pond, um, this project is funded through the Gulf Environmental Benefit Fund, another oil spill restoration fund. Uh, we got $2.1 million for it. The project was awarded in 2013. It's estimated to be completed by the end of um, December. We've, we've taken bids on this project, and this project is like every project that the city's facing, the county's facing. It, it's, it's impacted by the upsurge in the economy, meaning things are costing more than we had previously planned. So um, the bids came in. They look like they're, they're over budget. We are now going back to um, NIFWIF or the National Fish and Wildlife Foundation and seeing if we can get some additional money for this project. So that means the award of contract is, is really going to be pending not only the outcome of the bid review, but the outcome of potentially uh, additional funding for this project. Again, so that, that means Corrine Jones is postponed? It, it's not postponed. Um, I, I, I guess you choose the word delayed, delayed. postponed. Okay. Um, it, it is, but again, this is the first time we've ever done these types of projects with this type of funding. So I, I'm hesitant to say we missed a deadline because it, it's hard to create deadlines for something that, that we've never anticipated before. The, the VTMA project, this project is, is on, it's, it's moving forward as, as planned. Um, the project, again, started back in September 2014. We looked to complete it in March of 2017. It's on the agenda uh, for your Thursday council <coughs> meeting. Where do we stand now? The type of activity, it's an environmental assessment, and we're into the design phase. 
we're going to see the final environmental assessment in November, and we should, um, if the, the things go well, we'll see a 30 percent design approval in, in September of 2015. Uh, Deepflex, this project has raised some some eyebrows because the uh, obviously the construction's on hold, but the tenant is getting refinancing, and um, we will see that. Well, what, what we know is that that building that's out there has been hardened for the, the ports. Uh, it meets the port's requirements for hurricane preparation, and there's now money in to finish the, uh, the, cons the construction of the, the hardening, I should say, the hardening of the, of the building. Um, again, we're, we're waiting for uh, <coughs> additional financing to come in. Uh, the airport regional stormwater pond, this, this project is on track. Uh, we expect it to be completed in August of 2015. Carpenter Creek Bank Stabilization, this is the one project, this is a very interesting project because it's we're actually spending public funds to improve private property, but we were able to do that through a grant from USDA. Uh, it's a short time frame. We, we expect, we're just now taking public input on that. Um, but. So we're in the pre-design permitting phase, and we expect by the end of August we'll actually have the design, and then the construction will be able to start in September. Uh, the digital radio up system upgrade, this is the uh, Motorola came in, and they're, they're upgrading our, our emergency radio system. That con contract was awarded recently, and then we're already in the equipment procurement stage. There's going to be this week a detailed review by FPD, PPD, or PFD and, and PPD, and we're going to start doing improvements to our city dispatch center in September, but this project should roll pretty quickly and be over by December. Bayview Center demolition, of course, this is um, creates a lot of interest. Um, we completed the hazmat survey. doesn't look as bad as we, we anticipated, not as much asbestos, so we're able to go forward. Um, they're creating the drafting, the demolition, or the RFP for the demolition, we expect to award that bid in September, and it should take probably no longer than uh, two to three weeks to actually do the demolition. Uh, Vickery Center repairs, those are underway. Uh, we don't see any, any major hang-ups there. We did get approved for the, the extra mitigation money from FEMA. So we expect to have that project completed September 30th, have activities back in the building then, and we'll actually close out that entire project with FEMA in October. Osceola Golf Course, and these are the, these last two projects are really kind of the last big projects, FEMA projects that we had hanging out there that we needed to get accomplished. So uh, golf course clubhouse repairs, those are coming along. A lot of that is um, installing flood doors on, on the buildings, so uh, really just hardening the facilities, and then we're going to raise all the H, HVAC system or the, yeah, the HVAC systems up above uh, the flood stages. But I will be coming back to you probably that in the future because Osceola Golf Course Clubhouse has some other structural issues. That, um, 2015 Street Rehabilitation Project, I guess the, the most important thing, right, we're getting ready to work on McClellan and Bars Street. Um, McClellan Street, which is near the Cordova Park Elementary, I believe, and has, has been a, uh, that, that shows up a lot on our 311 calls for pothole repairs. And then we've got um, coming up 16th Avenue and 12th Avenue uh, scheduled for the round out the year. Where's 12th Avenue? How far? Where is that from? Do you know? Uh, I'll, I'll get the, the specifics for you. I was driving down the other day. And I, it was like it needs to be done. <laughs> We're on it. Uh, the firefighter apprentice program. This this has been um, probably kind of going a little bit uh, below the radar, but this is the program that uh, PFD and uh, Career Source Escarosa were working on jointly to uh, provide opportunities for um, people in the community who may not have ha been able to get into the fire academy or had, had the, the means to do so. Uh, ten candidates were identified, two have dropped out, and we're really at kind of the last stage. Uh, in fact, on Wednesday morning at 6 a.m., I believe, uh, they're driving over to Mobile, or will be driven over to Mobile, to take the uh, fitness test, which I understand um, if you're doing it in very hot weather with all that fire gear on, is not very easy. But the people that pass that test, and they will have other opportunities, 
Um, they'll be able, as many of them that, that qualify, so we've got eight qualified candidates all the way through administratively. They pass the fitness test. They will have a spot in the fire academy, and, and that will start off in August. Um, Valley Drive at Carpenter Creek. This, I just wanted to highlight this because um, it, it is on your, your agenda for Thursday, but this is another one. It's a water quality improvement project. Should we, We've gotten a lot of questions that, that come in, whether it's through 311 or just residents concerned with water quality in Carpenter Creek and, and in overall stormwater management in and around Carpenter Creek. So this is a, a capital improvement project that's been on the list. Um, we've, we've gotten it funded, and we're getting ready to start construction. Some miscellaneous things that you really should be aware of. We've gotten inquiries for, there was a zoning inquiry for a low THC cannabis dispensing organization. This is one of, Northwest Florida is going to, under the 2014 law, Northwest Florida gets one of the, the licenses, for lack of a better word. So we've had inquiries of where, where could they set up a dispensary in the city. And um, Sherry Morris has answered them with a letter saying, it's neither specifically prohibited nor permitted in the city um, because we obviously it's, it's just not spelled out. So this may be something that council wants to, to get out in front on. Um, right now the, the zoning is, is pretty ambiguous on, on where this could be. Conceivably, it could be treated as a pharmacy, and, and that, that's where it would be permitted. Uh, the restore update, um, probably most of you had followed this, but there's been a proposed settlement. The, the long and short of it is far less money coming to the restore pot one that will be controlled by the county. Interesting enough, um, the NERDA funds, uh, that restora early restoration or now um, natural resources restoration um, fund, got far more money. So that's where the money is. It's probably more birds, turtles, and fish type projects than, than things like, say, workforce development. But it looks like that's where the bulk of the money went out of the settlement. Um, grant applications, we put in four big grant applications to FEMA for hazardous mitigation grant projects. This is where we looked at buying up, acquiring properties, and then enlarge, we would tear them down and enlarge stormwater ponds. Those have been bumped to say tier two because there's not enough money to fund them. So we still have them on the project list, but um, to date they have not been funded. The big competition, HUD National Disaster Resiliency Competition that we worked hard with the county on and, and then the state put in the application. The state of Florida did not qualify. Uh, it came as a, as a shock to everyone, which Florida probably gets most natural disasters just in terms of dollar value spent, um, Florida didn't even make the round two. So unfortunately, we were really expecting some money out of that, and it's not going to be forthcoming. We do have a 319 grant application out. This is with uh, Florida. It's a grant managed through Florida DEP. This is a really a showcase project for doing low impact development so that the pervious pavements, the, uh, the swales, all the, the things that we, you would expect in, in new, greener development to see and that we would like to encourage around the city. The focus of that project is the, the Chappie James house, so to do the parking lot and then as they do repairs on that house to make it um, as stormwater friendly as possible. So we, we heard good news on that. We haven't got a final word of whether or not it's been approved but we do have matching funds available for that one. Bayou to hard dredging, that's in a FEMA project related to the floods. 70% of that's been completed. We expect that that will be completed probably by mid-August. Last two things I want to make you aware, um, because this, this will be coming back to all of you in, in, your, in your districts, that um, Parks and Rec Director Brian Cooper is working on a, doing an assessment of all our parks, finding out exactly what equipment we have there, he wants to go to the to the residents, the neighborhood associations, find out what do they want in parks, and it, really we're coming up with a strategic plan for for our city's parks. So we will be reaching out to residents in, in all of your um, different districts, and we'll be sure to keep you up to date on that. Just one question on that, real quick: Do we have any sort of way of telling how much parks are used or not, as far as like a survey that's been done in the past, as far as like use of parks? We. We can look into that. I know that we've got 
at least one intern from UWF that we're, we're trying to use to gather this, this information, and, and park usage is, is one item. Um, okay. I, but I'll have to get back to you on that. That's okay. I just wanted to put it out there because I do know that, that I know there's several that hardly ever get used, and it's just something that I know you don't ever say get rid of parks, but, you know. Anyways, all right. And the final thing, if you've noticed that the temperature fluctuates a lot in City Hall recently, we had the boiler go out unexpectedly, so we have a temporary boiler set up in the, I guess it's up here in the, the northwest corner. That's, we're, we're in the process of getting a new boiler. That should be in by the end of September. That's a $110,000 hit to the budget, so um, it completely unexpected, went out about 10 years. Looks like it could have just been a, a manufacturing <coughs> flaw, but the, the guarantee is, is up. Yes, Ms. Kennewin. Yes, I had uh, the Bayou Texar dredge, and someone asked me about the sand. I don't that if they you take out the sand, what do you dump it, and can people use it for sandbags or anything like that? Well, the they're they're putting it on the the island that's um, just on the east side of the railroad trestle there at Seventeenth. Mm -hmm. That that was the, the the deposit site for that sand. I, I, honestly, I, I would have to get back to you on, you know, what's the, the use of that, but usually that dirt, that sand belongs to the, the contractor that's, that's doing that work, okay. unless it's otherwise been defined in the contract. So I'll have to have to get back to you on that one. Okay. Thank you. Yes, Council Bear. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, just a comment. You know, I sat here for almost five hours now. And this is an incredible amount of information. This reminds me of what we voted down on having during our agenda conference, the information updates. This should be during our council meeting. Um, there are four council members here right now. There's no members of the public. We are completely doing a disservice by having this as part of a workshop. This is not a workshop. This is information updates. And the final comment I'll make is the park assessment should have been done years ago. If I'd been Parks and Rec Director and come in here, I would have done it when I first got here. I cannot believe it's taken this long to do a park assessment on our parks. I'm glad it's finally being done, though. But I think this is totally irrelevant to a workshop to have this as part, and I wanted that to be on the record. Thank you. Uh, and I, I believe that came out of the last workshop at the, the airport, if I may address that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that was, that was one of the questions. We, where, where does this fit? We need to give more information to the council, to the public. So um, where does this fit? And just as an oh, by the way, we are improving the, the website. So all of these things that, that I talk about, you know, you, people, the public, anyone will be able to drill down further. Um, we're going to have all of the background materials on the website. So I, again, I, I leave it yeah. to, to all of you. If, if you find that it's more appropriate at, at the council meeting, um, well, I mean, this, 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 I mean, it was my decision to have it at the workshop, and, I, and I'd stand by that. I, this council always wants more information, and when they get it, they seem like they, it's not good enough. So, I mean, I'm glad you came and gave it to us. Um, I think we need more, and if the more you want to give out, the more I'll, I'll, I'll put on the agenda as long as I'm president. So I appreciate it. Thank With you. that, we're adjourned.